charge. <laughs> charge. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're gonna do a roast on the Alio Bullet. So uh, I'm Luke, this is Zach, our head roaster hey guys. here at Artisti. And you might have seen the first video where we did uh, tell you that we are getting one of these. Well, it's been a few um, weeks, probably maybe a couple of months now actually, yep. um, where we've been using the Alio Bullet to um, profile roasts uh, and have a good play. So we want to introduce you to a full roast here and a few of the things we've done to make sure that the Alio is working perfect here at Artisti. Okay, so the roaster tells you what's going on. We're going to get into it. All right, Zach. So um, we've got a 200 gram sample here. What's the coffee that we're going to roast today? Uh, this is a, a Costa Rican micro lot, uh, a natural process. Awesome. Uh, it's a bit of a, a coffee that's been around for a while, a little bit drier. Yep. Um, so how are we going to roast this uh, with the software, mate? What are we going to do? Now we've uh, got a recipe loaded up here. We're going to play this back so that it replicates the parameters that we've preset. Yep. So Roast Time is the software that comes with the Alio Bullet and Zach's already had a few recipes and as you said, replay. Correct, yeah. You, now with Roast Time you have access to Roast World where you can access other people's recipes, download them and use them for yourself. This is available to, to anybody to use, it's a free software, it's, it's really cool. Awesome. Well we'll touch back on that a little bit more, let's get this uh, roasting and we'll see yep. what's happening on the screen as we go. Let's do it. Alright, so what's the process here Zach, talk us through it. Now we're going to take off this little plug, um, we want to keep that on to allow the heat to stay in. Awesome. We're going to put on the funnel and drop in our, our beans. Yep. Now there's two things that are going to happen when we put these beans in. Um, it's an auto charge or you can actually manually charge, is that correct? Correct, yeah. It will sense that you've dropped Charged. the beans, it'll sense the drop in temperature and it'll start that automatically. Alright, so let's go. Yep. Roasting has started. And we need to take this off and plug it back up. Cool, that keeps the heat in. Alright, so it's auto sense the, the beans going in which is really handy. So a lot of other softwares you do have to you know, click charge on the app, so it's very intuitive and makes it nice and easy. Keeps your hands free to do other things. Yeah. So talk to us through what's happening, what we can see in some of these numbers in the top left hand corner there, Zach. Yep. So you have your total roast time up here. Now you have two different methods for assessing your temperatures. You have your traditional bean temperature probe up the back, but you also have your infrared bean temperature sensor up the front, which is a laser. It's far more accurate in, uh, in temperature. So down the bottom here, you have our preloaded recipe. And the layers on top here are what's currently happening. Now each colour is a different marker, right? So you have your bean temperature probe, your infrared bean temperature sensor, and then the rate of rise for each of these, each of these sensors, right? Now you also have that information on the left hand side here. This information will fill itself in once we reach crack. There are two ways to control the roaster here on the computer or on the interface on the front of the roaster. Yep, so just running back quickly about why there's two beam probes. The earlier models had a, um, like a K-type or a hard probe, essentially. Correct, um, We've yes. been using in roasters for, for many years, and there's been some progressions there. But what happened with the V2 is they've now uh, maintained that probe button and given you an infrared beam, which is far more accurate as well. That's correct. The one thing we did notice about the software here is we had to go back and tell it to um, use the infrared beam and not the beam probe as the primary tracker for heat. So You have a choice. Yeah. yeah. So definitely the more accurate way to go. Correct, yeah. I, I like to have them both on. It's, it's a good comparison. It lets me know what's happening between the two. Um, and it's a good way to make sure that they're both functioning properly. Yep. And so we've got a couple of light colours on the back here, some squiggly lines and the, the ones coming across, and then some dark ones on the top. Talk us through that, Zach. Now these are the parameters that we have set for our for ourselves, right? So we have a, I don't know if you can see it through there, you have a marker for your 165 degree, which will be our end of dry period. And then you have a darker colour up the top here, which is set at 202, our first crack period. So you can see where you're heading, you have these um, I guess estimate lines that show you the direction that you're heading. 
is very useful. You can change all of these uh, settings and parameters in the, the settings menu here. Um, it's really just a, a, a personal thing. It helps us to be as accurate as possible. Yeah, so just more bit depth on the, on the two colors there. We're replaying a recipe already. So the light colors here is what it's done in the past. This is our rate of rise uh, um, by heat. Then you've got your bean temperature going up. So the light color is what the roaster is trying to follow for repeatability. And it's playing through that process. So people say to us, well, how, how can you be repeating or accurate time and time again? Mm. Well, that's what it's showing you right now. There's a background and it's basically roasting and repeating that background by replaying a recipe. Correct, yeah. You can see with this one here, the roast I did this morning was a lot cooler. So you've got that line here, it's warmed up a little bit now. So we're maybe two degrees above that, which is, is, is pretty accurate. Cool, so you can keep this replayed recipe going all the way through yep. uh, to the very end. Uh, it won't dump it at the, no. at the very end. You do manually have to open Don't up. Don't walk away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the only thing it doesn't do is discharge the beans. Yep. And again, we could be making a change here on the front if we wanted to. Um, we're coming up to what we call of our yellowing point, which is 165 degrees. Um, does it auto mark 165 for us on this software? You can. Um, I choose to do it manually because I, I'm controlling that as I go along. Um, Maybe yep. good to set it for your first one and then moving forward you can auto set it. But I mean, we, we roast different things all the time. All right, so it's coming up to 165. So that signals the drying phase of your roast, okay? So um, we want to monitor that and know from when we had a, our beans drop in to where they bottomed out or became a negative um, temperature. And from that point up is where we have a positive impact on the beans. So we measure that up to 165 degrees. Now once we go past 165 degrees, we're in what we call the Maillard stage. So that goes right up to first crack as a measurement. What's happening in that stage, Zach? In that stage, we're uh, caramelizing all the sugars and um, the proteins inside of the bean. We're, we're really highlighting all of those flavors there. Yep, so the longer, the easy way to say it, the longer you stretch that out, the more baked it's going to be, the shorter it's going to be, the more acidic and, and citrus high flavors are going to be in there. Um, so yeah, you've got to work out how long or short you want that to be. So yeah, 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 yeah it can go wrong. Uh, <laughs> I guess sh shorter, shorter and longer, you know, they're, they're something you've got to play with a little bit. Yep. It, it, there's not a one size fits all approach. Definitely. So we've got a couple of quick tools we've talked about before and how we understand what um, we're going to do, how long that dry is going to be, how big that, how long the Maillard is going to be. And that comes back to the bean density, how much moisture is in it as well. So if it's a hard bean, we want to put more heat in or, or less heat in, in those different stages and also the moisture contents as well. So that's right. You don't want to just go wasting all your green, throwing it in there and expecting the best. Correct. Awesome. So if you have a look now, um, after 165, the beans have started to change colour. They're not that green. It's in that yellowing stage now. Let's see, we've started to lose some of the outer skin. Yeah, a bit of the, the silver skin and chaff coming out, which is great. Now, just look at the setup a, a bit further. In the first video, we did talk about fluing. Um, you know, we did some, some initial um, seasoning roasts on the roaster outside. Definitely don't do it inside. It's quite a smoky <laughs> process. Um, you basically have to burn three lots of beans till they're super oily to coat mm. the drum. So it's a bit of a process, but a lot of fun, um, yeah, to get in and have a go with. Um, and then we looked at um, some sort of flue system. Now you cannot connect a flue directly to the, the bullet. Um, if you have that, you're gonna provide back pressure from any sort of tubing that you're gonna have. We've just got ours running up out through a vent in the roof there at the moment. Now there's a whole different range of ways to, to do this. Um, you, we'd recommend venting this for sure. You know, we've only got 200 gram roast in here. It does get a little bit of a smell, but anything like a 500 gram or a kilo, you will need to, to vent that either out through a side window. Um, there's a whole different ways you can do it. But if you're gonna have a me mechanical uh, suction coming from here, you do not want that suction to be drawing heat out of your roaster because you're basically sucking the heat out rather than it um, allowing the heat to work its way naturally through the roaster. That's right. So the easiest way is have a gap here, something that can catch the heat and then direct the smoke out. Yeah, don't underestimate it. You know, we, we have this hooked up to a whirly bird on the roof and you can feel the vacuum as it is. Any closer than that, we'd be taking heat out of the roaster. It wouldn't work as effective. Yeah, so try a natural draw. You'll be surprised what actually happens when you've got a heat source on the bottom and cool at the top before you start to go for a fan operated uh, mechanical style yeah. unit. 
definitely. Awesome. Very technical piece of timber in the back there. Um, we're still working on getting a better bracket, progress. Um, but the flue works, works great for us. All right, so what's happening now, Zach? Where are we at? We're, we're reaching our first crack temperature here. So I'm getting ready to mark that. How do you find, can you hear the first crack very much with the bullet? You can, you can. It's, it's, it's really not noisy at all. Yeah, you can Dep hear a slight little crack there. I don't yeah, know if you can pick that up on the mic. Depending, the, I found the easiest way is to take out the plug there on the top and you can hear a little better. There you go. There you go. So what we do find is when you've got smaller roasts in a bigger, um, you know, smaller capacity roasts or charge volumes in a roast date, you tend to get a, a later crack time and the heats mm. are a little bit extended out. So, yeah. That's right. I think, I think that's why, for me personally, I like to manually mark those parameters yep. to be the most accurate. Yep. We've had first crack, which is when we do hear that first little explosion, but now we've got rolling crack, so it's constantly popping and, and cracking that's away. Right. That's right. We can assume that most of the beans in there are undergoing that change. Alright, so we don't want to have that open too much either, because the heat will drop as well, that's and right. the roaster has to recover. Um, look, people always ask about a, a bullet like this, it's the electric roaster versus the gas roasters. Um, we had to we had pulled this thing totally apart, it, it was amazing, we, we know how to service it, right down to changing um, you know, the, L, single the induction and the whole lot, so <laughs> uh, maintenance is something you want to maintain, you want to keep the, the uh, infrared beam clean, uh, all of the seals and plates greased up and, and, and well sealed, so maintenance is something you need to, to look at. And we can help you with that as well. Definitely. Um, now, the, um, the cool thing was is about the heat source. Yeah. Have you found heat to be an issue? No, not at all. Not at all. Um, it, it, it's fast. It's reliable. It's, it's, it's really accurate, especially with that um, laser sensor, that yep. infrared sensor. What's that beep doing? That's a warning. If you are away from the roaster for any extended period of time, it will beep. To make sure you're still there you can push any button on the on the plate yep but it, it wants to know you're still there don't walk away from it to yep. start a fire will it shut off if you don't come back and press a button it will that it'll turn itself off correct okay. yeah. going into auto cooling mode or something yes, like that it does it goes into auto auto cooling yeah, yeah great you just waste money yep so that induction just going back to the induction heat it's a very big element kind of plate covering yeah. most of the bottom like of that coil, roaster. i think isn't it yeah it's very accurate very responsive the Very. fan speed that you can get out of here as well is fantastic. The fan speed is heat. amazing. Be, be careful when you play with your fan. It can push heat into the beam, but it also takes heat out. It's very powerful. Talking about the fan, the cooling tray is amazing. Very quick. You'll, you'll see in a minute awesome. as we reach our 13 minute mark. Yep. And we've been um, had a few com conversations with people now that we've been um, roasting and uh, put it out there that we've been dealing with these. And some people are running their little businesses from these bullets, doing yeah. some specialty style roast, which is great. They've had awesome results. Um, it's not a production roaster. That's something we've found that is a bit of a, a challenge, you know. Correct. It's been a day and a half and, and getting sort of 20 kilos of roast, which, you know, the economy of scale doesn't work there. But, no. you know, for singles, they've been running great little businesses. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You have the ability to, to change things straight away, uh, roast things the way you want it roasted. Um, you know, it's definitely something that we can we can help you with as well. Yep. Just reaching over here, we've got 10 seconds left on this roast. About to discharge that. Cool. So here at Artisti, what we're doing, we usually run a couple of roasts of our single origins. That's been our, our key thing to work on. Hey, a couple little beans bouncing out the side. It's an uneven table. You can see that's already cool to touch. It is. Yeah. Very, very effective. And have a look there, nice even colour all the way through. Now, we just popped in any sort of recipe. We haven't used uh, this really dialed in as a recipe. We just wanted to put some beans in, give you an example of, you know, it's 
Um, it's a trial roast, you know. We've done some density measurements, moisture, moisture measurements, and we've got a, a recipe there before that we want to replay that we know will kind of align with the bean. So that's a good way to look at it and go, well, what, what's happening now with the beans to, to make some distinctive changes on the next roast? So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, we, we use this now to do different types of roast for our single origins every month. That's been the key reason why we bought this, so that we can then scale it up to our larger volumes on the IMF. That's right. All right, so um, what are the three types of roasts that we might run on a single so that we can check the flavours and what we're trying to get, Zach? So we'll do essentially a, a short roast, a medium roast, and a long roast. Um, we will measure those moisture and density levels um, to assess which one of those roasts we should, I guess, try first. We don't want to do all three if we don't have to. Um, and if it fits into you know, one of those categories, we'll try that out, taste it, and, and move on to the next one if we need to. Um, they typically range from 10 minutes to 14 minutes. Awesome. And so we're just sort of playing, we're trying to keep the drying sort of similar and maybe the, yeah, the, the degree percentage. of development the same. And we're really just manipulating a longer or a shorter Maillard process to, to see how those beans like the caramelization, are we getting white sugars or really toffee yeah. flavors. Are they a fruity or a caramel? Yeah. yeah, so that's a good place to start. Move your Maillard and your, your first crack time out and your dry crack times out yeah. if, you, if you're going to have a play. You try to only change one parameter at a time. Yeah. yeah. So look, overall, the bullets have been an absolute success here for us. Awesome. Super fun. Yeah, you've had good time learning it and I knowing really about enjoyed it. Yeah, it's very user friendly. It's a, it, it's a great machine, easy to operate, lots of fun to use. It's fast, it's efficient. Yep, and you can share the data with other people. That's right. Or have a good starting point. You, know, yep. you don't have to know how to roast if you can just go in and grab a recipe and, and hit That's play. That's right. That's right. You have so much, so much support and help from that online, online presence there. People all around the world. Uh, it, it's really fun. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. So there you go. I hope that gives you a good idea of you know what an alien bullet's like to roast on. Uh, some of the introductory kind of things. We're going to give you more content as we progress. Uh, you know, through the weeks. Um, but for us, it's a huge tick. We're loving it. You know, Zach himself has learned a lot about roasting, you know, having all those smaller controls in, in smaller batches now. Definitely. Yeah. So getting back and actually tasting the roast afterwards and, and trying to then make an educated decision what would go back and change uh, rather than doing it on our um, production roaster. So thanks very much for watching. Um, hope you've enjoyed. If you've got any questions, leave them down below and uh, Zach's going to answer them. I will. All right. Because... Uh, you know, that's his space and we really want him to, to thrive and enjoy it and yeah. share that with you. Hit me up. I'd love to hear them. Awesome. So thanks very much for watching, everyone. If you haven't yet liked and subscribed, please do. We do appreciate the support. And share this pass with someone that's looking at a home roaster, you know, an upgrade from a popcorn maker, bread maker, all these other ones. This is definitely the kind of machine that you'd love to have, uh, you know, to really finesse that machine, um, uh, your roasts. And, you know, it pairs well with a great coffee machine at home. So. You know, if you've got a poor yeah. quality roast at the moment, but you've got a great machine, you may want to look at getting a better roaster. And or, if you buy a good roaster, get a good machine. Yeah, you know, the definitely. To allow you to analyse things properly and make great coffee. Anyway, thanks very much. That's it for us. We'll catch you next time. Cheers. Yeah.